Hey guys, on the bench this morning I have a Kenwood KA4002. This is my amplifier. I had this for about five or six years. I only use it in the garage, you know, playing music or even set it up on my YouTube, listening to TV. And I would have speakers hooked up to this and it sounded really nice. Uh, I've opened it up the other day because I was not a big issue, just a little bit of scratchiness around around the pots and stuff. So and I've never tested this uh, since I got it from a guy uh, way back and it was always it was always good to me. If I like the sound of this. It's, it's really nice. It does have nice sound coming out of this. Anyway, so I opened it up and I didn't think that I was going to make a video out of this, but I've noticed a couple of things on, on the uh, circuit board where I'm kind of questioning that maybe I should start checking voltage on this and uh, I'll show you guys. I just noticed that these resistors here, two of those, the are they are 0.47 ohm print off the schematic and check some voltage and uh, see the reason why this is so dark in the center and I, I really don't like that so maybe we'll check some voltage and I probably will check these capacitors go from there anyways I've got it hooked up on my speaker I've got a sin wave coming in here I got a frequency and I'll put it through my dim bulb and I'll put it through the scope and then we'll check it out and see what issue if any uh, I, I didn't think that I had an issue with this and we'll check out some voltage get it up on the scope uh, we'll see if any issues with this and um, I'm kind of curious so that's why I, I brought you guys along as well so what we're going to do is I'm going to check some voltage on here. There, my filter cap. Oh, I should, maybe I should power it on, eh? Okay, here we go. Coming out of the filter cap is 52 volts. My rectifier, which is right here, this would be the same, 52. And I believe these should be lower. 25, multiply 25 by 2 will give me this 52 voltage, eh? So my rectifier is working okay. It seems to be anyway. Let's see if I have any DC voltage on this kind of do <clears throat> 0 0.1 that's that's a little high and that'd be about a hundred millivolts it's not even measuring millivolts because it's too high yeah so you know we do have a little bit of issue in here and uh, uh, first of all I'm going to be checking I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to check the value of these resistors. I believe that these resistors should be still working because my my dim bulb is not detecting anything. So if I check my resistors on here, this resistor should be a point 47 and it's showing point 0.7, but um, I believe that's th my multimeter maybe can't read that one that slow, but I think they're still good. Let's let's compare these ones. Point 0.8. These are all the same. Point 0.47s. Point 0.8. These are 4.7. These two here are 4.7. So 5, 5.1. Yeah, and these ones here, uh, the ones that are dark in the center, they're 0, uh, 0.04. So 
So yeah, they're, the value is, is still good on them. But uh, power this on. I'll check. I'll check the heat on these. See why they're getting hot. Not really. Eighty. Eighty. I don't know if you guys can see that, but. 81 right now so I don't know maybe maybe I do have an issue on this part of the board this would obviously be uh, left or right I'm not I'm not too sure which is left or right now but uh, and these are my my output transistors that are behind this heat sink right here you can see them right down there and uh, according to the schematic this would be the left and the right channel and these are Q one two three and four though and those are my outputs that are right behind here right and the two N ones I should have 21 volts and the two center ones I should have 42 volts so my N ones should be 20, 21 volt. Oh. Let's see what I'm getting. Oh, I'm getting 24, 25 volts. 24, nine. And the center one, I should only have 42. And I've got 52, so that's 10 volts higher than I should okay let's uh let's shut this off I'll power this off for now and and I don't see any hot spot on here too too much the resistors that I'm looking for is right down here I'm gonna take those resistors out of there okay So those are the two resistors. Point forty-seven, point forty-eight, point forty-nine, point forty-eight, point forty-seven, and these are two watts. Okay, so I'm on. Where's I'm on ohm? Zero point eight, point eight. This one is a little high. This is quite precise, eh? Uh, my LCR meter is measuring 0.46. So it's pretty good to measure this one. This one is bang on at 0.47. So their, their value is still good. Just that, I don't know, they, they were kind of hot and to me, I, I don't like that. So we'll have to replace those two, so we will. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna check some capacitors. I've always liked to check the capacitors. 
what I do is I put a big light behind. I'll bring you guys closer. There's my big light. Those are capacitors. I'm gonna bring my capacitor wizard out here. Okay. Let's chuck some of these capacitors. Turn this on. That's a good one. That's another good one. I didn't check this one. This one is actually dead. It's not even measuring it. That means there's no current going through this, eh? That means that this uh, this capacitor is fried. There's nothing on this capacitor. Uh, this one is okay. This one is good. Okay, I'm gonna check this one. This one was, it's not even measuring anything. This is the cap. Let's check that closer. See if my capacitor wizard was giving, giving me a, a right reading. There. This capacitor is dried up there's absolutely nothing it's open I've happened to, I have an open circuit here there's no current going through here and this is a and this is a 47 microfarad at 50 volts let's check this over the scope The other ones are checking okay, except this one. I'm gonna check out the schematic for this and see where uh, this was heading to. This could have been uh, the cause for these resistors, or it could have dried up because these resistors are not working properly, or uh, it must have had a surge of some sort at one time. And that could be the possibility I, Definitely we need to check the schematic on this, okay? I'll bring you closer. Resistor 92 and 94 
have been taken out of circuit and those are the ones that I'm going to replace uh, resistor 101 should be a 56k I'm wondering if it's not because it's on it's in circuit resistor 98 and this is the uh, the cap 61 that I've replaced so resistor 98 should be 10 ohm and it is 10 ohm and yeah, yeah diode is is in Siri with this one but uh, I'm pretty sure this should be good resistor Okay, so during 56K. Well, let's see what I'm measuring. And it's 56K. We'll change this and this cap. Okay. I've got the capacitor, those two resistors changed. We'll solder this to the board. Okay guys, I'm ready to plug this back in. I think I'll go through the dip bulb first though. It did power back on. Looks pretty damn good to me. Alright, so let's do this. I've got the two resistors here. And that capacitor, C61. Guys, if you have this receiver at home you better check that C61 and those two resistors you never know this I, I, after 30 40 years I don't call this full faulty I, I think it's just aging it aged well I think let's see if it's changed anything of my voltage It's gone down to 25. What do we get here? It's still 25 though, eh? 25 there. Then 52. But uh, it could be the nature of the beast as well. Uh, I'm gonna hook up the auxiliary on us, see if we get any sound coming out of us. Hey guys, um, all done. Changing about 20 capacitors on here. Uh, I changed the two resistors. One capacitor was uh, completely fried. Uh, what I finally did with this, which was supposed to be just a routine checkout, clean all the pots and stuff like that, I ended up changing the emitter resistor on the right channel and uh, right now I'm ready to test this the voltage wise okay so I'll bring you guys closer we'll do the bias check right now this set the millivolts there we go we'll do this channel first this channel is telling me that I've got 64 millivolts on that. These, so this is the pot right here that I'm going to be setting this down to 20 millivolts. See if it responds well to it. Yeah, there it is, going down. So 20 millivolts coming up. Almost there. There we go. 
slowing down a bit much. I always like to bring it above my mark because then I have some play to it. Like 20.5 to me would be excellent. Okay, so let's try the other channel and see where we're getting at. Okay, very carefully though, eh guys? Okay, this one is at 66. Bring this down to the other way, I guess. 20 millivolts. as if this thing is still settling in. Okay, we'll leave it at that for a minute. But pretty satisfied, uh, 20, 20 millivolts, it's really good. So and now we'll do, uh, the DC voltage is non-adjustable, which is too bad, but so we're almost done with this. Just gonna take this off and I'm going to do a sound test, see what I'm getting with this. I've got uh, my auxiliaries, my speakers are all set up as well. Well, uh, hook this up on speaker back here. I always like to do this. It's kind of my favorite part, eh? Okay, and I've also got the scope. Ready to go here. There, that looks pretty damn good, eh? You guys can see the scope? No, I can't. Okay. Well, maybe. No, you can. Alright. Got a thousand hertz on here through my auxiliary speaker raise on. Uh, I think I have the mute off. But there's my there's my send wave. So I'll I'll uh, I'll mute this. We're not gonna and I'm I'm making sure I have an eight ohm, eight ohm load attached to this. Okay, let's bring this up and see what kind of power we're getting. Right in the center, I have two volts RMS. 45, I have 11 RMS. And, oh, there's my distortion. So we'll kick this back. And we're reading 12.6 RMS on this. 12.6 with no distortion under an 8 ohm load. So. 12, low, 12 RMS is a lot, eh? So we'll add this up as well. Oh, I forgot to to see what my multimeter was giving me. Kind of missed that one. Oop, I have it set to millivolts. And it should be AC volts. Come on, Joe. 13 volts RMS. <laughs> That's pretty damn good. Hey, 13 RMS. Of course, that's only the right, the left channel, but uh, yeah, that's pretty damn cool. No distortion at 13. I'm gonna fly you over to what I've done on this. And uh, these are the emitter resistors that I've changed. I've only changed, I've changed those two resistors. Uh, this capacitor, remember this capacitor was open, eh? 
but I've changed all these capacitors on this board and uh, and of course I've cleaned all these pots say eh? they were really easy access to them this is a uh, this is a really nice machine actually the Kenwood 4002 and uh, it's looking it's working really good there's my outputs back here you can, you can see them after setting up setting the bias and all that stuff I'd like I always like to check the, the voltage you guys can see that eh? sure here's some voltage on my outputs it stayed about the same just I had 25 on both ends and I had 52 I think well, it's gone up to 53 the bias has been set to 20 millivolts but anyways uh, it is working great there's no there's no heat to this so everything is working as it should uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, this probably uh, solved a lot of issues that I have with this and I'm, I'm happy with it at anyway. least I'll know that by changing these resistors and changing all these new caps around this board I know this thing is going to be working a lot smoother and uh, it'll be I'm pretty sure this is going to be nice okay hey guys I'm going to wrap this up put the top back on bottom plate back and uh, if you enjoy the video thumbs up and subscribe to my channel I would really appreciate it Okay, there we go.